some big news on the cannabis front here to report. Yesterday, Cureleaf reported the closure of its acquisition in Grassroots deal that we've seen uh, trickling through uh, and now finally official as of yesterday. That would make Cureleaf the world's largest cannabis company by revenue and by far uh, the most, uh, I guess I should say the largest footprint here as the transaction expands Cureleaf's presence from 18 states to 23 states and its expanded geographic dispensary presence now offers access to medical or adult use cannabis to more than 192 million people, roughly two thirds of the U.S. population. And joining us now for more on the deal is Joe Lusardi, Leaf CEO, who joins us once again. Uh, Joe, good to see you. I mean, this is a deal we knew would be closing. We just didn't know when. Uh, but now that it's done, what do you think is the biggest thing that it adds for Leaf and what looks to be a, a very intense uh, competitive space here as the cannabis sector continues to grow? Yeah, no doubt. Thanks for having me, Zach. I mean, it was a year in the making. We're very happy it finally closed. I mean, for us, it gives us very important geographies, right? Fast growing states like Illinois, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, a lot of that Midwestern part of the country where Cure Leaf didn't exist, we now have access to. Zach, you can get in a car now and drive from Massachusetts to California and uh, touch a Cure Leaf state along the way. So we're uh, a national company. Um, we're going to be building national brands, 23 states, the most um, footprint of anybody in the space. So we're pretty happy about the, the transaction. Yeah, let's talk about the trend line, too, though, because, uh, you know, sales in June set a record when we look at what Curly has been doing. Your chairman said July is pacing on top of that even before factoring in the grassroots acquisition. So how should investors be thinking about demand moving forward in the pandemic as we see a record cannabis sales coming from Colorado, Illinois and Oregon? Uh, all posting that in the month of June. So what's demand look like and how should we be thinking about it? Yeah, Zach, I would say consistently across the country, demand is up month over month. Um, I think what we're seeing is that, you know, anxiety, um, sleep, all those things are at an all time high in terms of people looking to cannabis for relief. So we're seeing more and more people come to the category. Um, without exception, demand is up. Uh, we're gonna, we'll do our earnings call in August, and I think we're very excited about um, you know uh, forecasting Q3 and, and the rest of the year. Um, we've we the company had a record in June, so we're feeling very good about um, the demand for the industry. Of course, you know we were deemed essential in every market we operate in, so um, we feel we know how to manage our way through a pandemic, and I'm feeling very good about the business. Yeah, I mean when we look at the business too, though it's 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 lofty the goals for the next full year, a billion dollars in sales, uh, the the mark. Um, but when we think about demand and how it might have shifted during the pandemic, are you seeing maybe uh, different uh, demographics in terms of who's tapping the cannabis market or has it been consistent even before the pandemic hit and, and what it looks like as we move further along in 2020? Yeah, I mean, I would say the only constant is that cannabis consumers are from all walks of life. It's a very diversified group of people that are looking at cannabis for, for various need states. So um, we're seeing elderly people coming in with pain, sleep, anxiety. We're seeing people that want to come in to use cannabis to relax, take the edge off. Um, it's really amazing the diversity of our customer base and, and the, the demand that we're continuing to see built. Well, when you talk about the expectations in that and the sales uh, projections that we've heard from Cure Leaf so far, again, that billion dollar annual mark, um, it's interesting because last time you and I talked, it didn't sound like a lot of the changes that we've been seeing on potentials here for legalization, perhaps at a federal level, were not really baked into that uh, guidance. And uh, we got the update too. Cowan's been saying that that what happens in the Senate seems more important than what we see at the presidential level. And on Thursday, yesterday, uh, the nonpartisan Cook political report for the first time this year said the Democrats are now favored to take back the Senate. Um, and that would be huge when you think about what could happen on the federal level. So have, have your thoughts changed on really how you should be projecting what could happen in 2021 if we think about uh, marijuana getting legalized at a federal level or even just getting the Safe Banking Act or any sort of catalyst in, in changing legalization? Yeah, we, we certainly haven't incorporated any of that into our guidance or our modeling, but, you know, we are certainly hopeful that we'll get cannabis legislation next year. I mean, if you think about this, there's 37 states now with medical programs, 11 with adult use, highly likely New Jersey and Arizona pass adult use bills this fall. Um, you know, if the Democrats take the Senate or the, the, the White House, I think you'll see sweeping cannabis um, reform very quickly. It's not a partisan issue. Um, for sure, we have support on both sides of the aisle, but I do think the Democratic leadership has shown a desire to pass um, cannabis legislation where the Republican leadership has not. 
Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily want to end the segment without pointing out, yes, it, it would be a catalyst here. And obviously this deal uh, it grows your footprint. But when we think about the competition in the space, it's not just coming from other multi-state operators, Green Thumb Industries, Cresco, some of the other ones that are EBITDA positive. But also it could present uh, the triggering event that we've been waiting for in terms of Canopy, the Canadian LP coming in and finally merging with acreage. Uh, and on that front, be curious to get your take on how that might start to change the dynamics, the market dynamics we should expect in the cannabis space once you start having some larger players and the cash that Canopy has to work with here, how it changes maybe uh, the strategy that Cure Leaf's operating with. Sure. I mean, our competition is the black market, full stop. Um, you know, 90% of cannabis transactions are still done through a drug dealer. Um, our goal is to create access to cannabis, do it safely, regulated, and taxed. I think if we do that, frankly, we'll all be very successful. This is a $100 billion market that only did $10 billion of regulated sales last year. So we see a huge amount of potential for all the companies that want to do this in a regulated, safe, taxed way. Well, as you said, uh, the next earnings update we'll get is mid-August. Joe Lasardi, CureLeaf CEO, uh, thanks so much. We'll be watching for the latest update. Appreciate you joining us today. Thanks, Zach.